path today in this video I am going to explain proportional relationship and how to graph that relationship a proportional relationship between two variables is just a relationship where the ratio between the two variables is always going to be the same for example suppose here I have x and y when x is 1 y is 3 when x is 2 y is 6 when x is 3 y is 9 and when x is 7 y is 21 this is a proportional relationship why is that because the relationship between y and x is always the same thing or you can say the ratio between x and y is always the same thing look so when we say the rational between y and x take the value of y 3 over 1 it's equal to 6 over 2 it's equal to 9 over 3 it's equal to 21 over 7 so always here the ratio between y and x is a 3 so that's why this is a rational or proportional relationship now let's go back to our lesson in this lesson again I'm going to explain how to graph a proportional relationship look at this example here again suppose time here is x and water is y look after one minute water used two gallon after two minutes four gallon after four minutes eight gallons and after six minutes 12 gallons and after eight minutes 16 gallons so here when I want to find the ratio between x and y or y and x I can say y is 2 over 1 it's 2 4 over 2 again it's 2 and 6 over or 12 over 6 it's 2 and 16 over 12 8 it's 2 so that's why this is proportional relationship now we want to use this table to write order pairs in the form time water used. look the first one after one minute two gallon two minutes four gallons four minutes eight gallons six minutes 12 gallons and eight minutes 16 gallons now if I want to represent this I have to take x value first then y value if I want to graph this one this line called y axis and this line is called x axis I want to represent the time on x axis and the water used gallon on y axis because here I took the relationship between x and y okay x and y so the first number representing x value and the second number representing y value so the unit rate here in this example two gallon per one minute as I explained before when I took the relationship between y and x use the value of y over the value of x because the rational here y over x is always the same it's equal to 2 so 2 gallons per 1 minute now again the first number representing x value and the second number representing y value so the horizontal line is called x axis and the vertical line called y axis so this is x axis and this one is y axis and the intersect here between x axis and y axis is called the origin it's called what the origin point so here representing 0 and 0 okay so the origin point always 0 and 0 the x value is 0 and the y value is 0 so if I want to represent I have to take x first when x is positive that means we have to go to the right when x is negative we have to go left 
And for y, if the y is positive, we have to go up. And when y is negative, we have to go down. So now I will start with taking the x value. x value is 1, so I have to go from the origin point 1 to the right, 1 step to the right, and 2 steps up. Look here, on this graph we are presenting 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18, 20. So here in each step we moved two steps. Look here, from 0 to 2, that means I have to go 1 to the right and 2 up. The intersect between them I will circle. So this is the first point. Now the second point is 2 and 4, so I will go to 2 on x-axis and 4 y-axis. Again here, if I want to represent 4 and 8, I have to go to 4, then 8, because the intersect between them comes here, and 6 to 12, 6 is here on x-axis. Always again, you have to take the x value first, then the y value is a 12, so the intersect between them becomes here. And when it's 8, the value of y is 16. So when I finish representing this point, I have to connect between my points. I have to draw a line, start from the origin point, And this line is raising up. OK, boys? So this is how to show your points on the graph or how to represent the proportional relationship. Again, we have to start from x, then from y value. Again, x value when it's positive to the right side, when it's negative to the right side. y uh, axis, if it's the value of y is positive, we have to go up. And when it's negative, we have to go down. But here, always look, all the values here are positive. So we will go right, up, right, up, right on x-axis and up on y-axis. Okay? Now, let's go to our practice. Use the graph for exercise 1 and 3. We have to solve these equations. An express bus travels 150 miles to Washington. DC makes the trip in three hours. What is the unit rate? Again, I think you took how to find the unit rate. You have to take first 150 miles over three hours. If we want to find the unit rate, we have to find or divide 150 by three becomes 50 miles per hour. So the unit rate here is 50 mile per one hour. Okay? Now, the second question. Describe what the unit rate means in the context of the problem. Now, we are going to explain what the unit rate means in the context of the problem. Look here, if I want to describe, the answer will be for every hour driven, the bus travels 50 miles. Again, for every hour driven, the bus travels 50 miles. For each hour, the tra bus travels 50 miles. Now, name three equivalent ratio in the form. Number of hours driven, then number of miles traveled. So here I can say 1 and 50. For first hour, the bus travels. 50 miles and second hour the bus travel traveled 100 miles and after three hours or three and a half hours or four hours after for example 
24 hours the bus traveled 200 miles okay boys now problem solving methane is a chemical compound methane is methane is a chemical compound Methane is a chemical compound. The ratio of carbon atoms to hydrogen atoms and methane is always the same. Use the table for exercise 4 to 8. Here we have to use this table to solve all the questions from 4 to 12. Now, what is the unit rate of hydrogen atoms to carbon atoms? If I want to find the unit rate of hydrogen atoms to carbon atoms I have to say hydrogen to carbon I have to say for hydrogen atoms one carbon atom for hydrogen atoms one carbon atom now describe what the unit rate means in the context of the problem I can say for every one carbon atom for every one carbon atom there are four hydrogen atoms I can say in question number five again for every one carbon atoms there are four hydrogen atoms okay now next question question number six write the equivalent ratio that are missing for the table in the form number of carbon atoms number of hydrogen atoms now first one for for hydrogen and one for carbon so each one carbon atom and must be for hydrogen atom so here I want to find the unit rate I can say y over x is 4 over 1 that means the answer is 4 so here 1 multiplied by 4 to make it 4 3 multiplied by 4 becomes 12 and 5 by 4 becomes 20, 8 by 4 becomes 32. So here when I want to find y over x, 4 divided by 1 is 4, 12 by 3 is 4, 20 by 5, 24 by 6, 32 by 4 always is 4. So this is the, uh, these numbers are the answer for question number 6. Now question number 7, graph the order pairs on a coordinate plane label the x-axis carbon x-axis carbon and y-axis must be hydrogen okay boys so carbon and hydrogen in carbon and hydrogen here we have to take these points 1 4 3 12 and 5 20 6 24 and 8 32 Let's go now to grab these points. Look here. The question asks me we have to use x value, x axis and y axis. So this is x axis. It will make it big. This is x axis. And this is x and y. So this is x axis. And this one. Is y axis now if I want to represent I have to put on the x axis carbon value and on y axis hydrogen now on x axis I have to put the values of carbon so start from 1 2 3 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And on y-axis we have to put the value of hydrogen. Starting from 4, I can go in each step of 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28 and 32 now 
the first point was one carbon atom four carbon four hydrogen atoms one carbon here and four so this is the first one so this is what this is the first one the second one three and the twelve three carbon atoms and the twelve hydrogen atoms and the third one five carbon atoms and the twenty hydrogen five here and the twenty here then six to twenty four six carbon atoms to twenty four hydrogen then the last one eight and thirty two eight and thirty two now if I want to connect between them I have to connect between the points let me change the color here so I have to start from zero then sorry so it becomes a line like this let me connect between them normally because here so this must be straight but I don't know what's the problem here when I want to make it straight okay. so this is the line so this is my line when I connect between the points boys so the line comes like this we can connect between the points let me show the points again last point second point third point okay boys now let's continue use the graph to identify how many hydrogen atoms are in a sample of methane that contains seven carbon atoms we can go back to our graph and connect between seven carbon atoms and between what seven so the line must be on the, the point must be on the line so when i connect between x-axis and y-axis so the answer becomes so my answer is 28 hydrogen atoms. Now, look at this example again. Here it's the same. We have to follow the same procedure. Now, what is the unit weight in miles per hour? Miles per hour here. 305 so it becomes 300 divided by 5 that's 60 miles over 1 so when it's 1 it's 60 miles then when it's 2 120 miles 3 180 miles when it's 4 240 when it's 5, it's 300. Now the second one, what order per time distance name the unit rate? The unit rate here, again, it's 1, 60. 1, 60. Describe what the time rate means in the context for the problem. For I can say for every one hour, trade drives, he traveled 60 miles for every one hour he traveled 60 miles again question number 11 for every one hour he travels 60 miles now question 12 write the equivalent ratio we wrote it here before 162 123 180 because here 
the ratio is 60. Okay, now again, if we want to represent or graph the order pairs here on a coordinate plane, we have to follow the same procedure like this example. You have to put the time on x axis and the distance on y axis, and then you have to graph them. Okay, boys? Then, for question number 14, if we want to find Use your graph to identify how many months train arrives in four and a half. You can say, if you don't want to use your graph, you can say 4.5 times 60. The answer becomes 270 miles. Okay, boys. Why 270 miles? Because here the time is four hours and a half times that each hour we travel. 60 miles so we have to multiply them if you want to get the distance speed times time this is time times speed to get what the distance you could i think this is in physics if you want to find the answer for that okay see you soon thank you so much